Alright guys, welcome to the first episode of Tony Teaches Jazz. We're going to talk about a couple things today. First, we're going to go over chords and extensions, like 7th chords, 9th, susses, flat 9s. And then we're going to go over progressions. What is a 2 five, one What is a one four, five? What does the minor 4 chord do? Then from there, we're going to talk about rhythm, comping, and then ending with scales and, how, and soloing tricks and how we put together ideas, thoughts, and phrases. So, here we go. Great. Chords. How do chords work? Let's break chords down even more. Let's go with a note. What is a note? A note is one. Whenever we say this note C, we are looking to play the note C. When we say the note G, I'm playing the note G. Fantastic. Chord is generally three or more. And we're going to take the first, third, and fifth note of our major scale. In this case, let's use C major. The we love this sound, it sounds fantastic, it's major, it's bright, it's happy. We're all a big fan, so whatever, great. We're going to take our first, third, and fifth note, which is Do, Mi, So, C, E, G, or 1, 3, 5. Let's take a quick listen. 1, 3, 5. Beautiful. Here's our major chord. Cha-ching! Awesome. Let's already change that. Our middle note, which is Mi, the third note, or E in this case, dictates whether it's major or minor. What do I mean by that? A chord is built off of these intervals. Ding, 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 ding. And in this case, we have a major third, then a minor third, which we will get to momentarily. But our middle note, Mi, Re, Do, dictates if it's major or minor. So let's make it minor by moving it down a half step to the next lowest note. In this case, that is E flat. Now we have a C minor chord, which emulates a sadder feeling and is all good and dandy. Great! So we used our first, third, and fifth note of our scale. Now, there are things called seventh chords that I'm sure you've seen when it says a C7 or a A7 or a G7. And in all three of these particular cases, we are adding the seventh note of that scale. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In this case, in C, the major seventh is the note B, which gives us a major seventh chord. Because we have one, three, five, and the major seven. Beautiful. We can also flat that note to make it a dominant seven. Let's hear that sound. It is now a B flat. Just like we changed that major to minor chord, we have two different chords in this same intervallic area. Cool. So we can do that same thing to that chord and we can make it a minor seven by flatting the third note and the seventh note of that scale. So we have three different seventh chords. We have a major seven, and I have a major third E and a major seventh B. We have a dominant 7, where I have the major 3, and I have I flatted the 7 down to, from B to B flat. I also have a minor 7 chord. Beautiful. Now I flatted the third note. It moved from E natural to E flat. Here's our three seventh chords. These are very important chords because they generally tell us where the song is going. They also have a lot of power, especially in jazz music. We are big fans of these two five ones, which we will get to momentarily. Let's talk about how to extend these chords a little bit farther so we have an idea of what happens when we talk about soloing and going off different, you know, deeper ideas of how chords move and stuff. Just like we counted up to seven, eight would be the octave. Eight. Here's C again. It just repeated itself. There's only so many notes, the tones repeat. Beautiful. After that, I'm going to keep counting up. I'm going to go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll stop right there, which seems like a good stopping point. So, sometimes a chord says it's a C9 chord, and I'm going to add the ninth note of my scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So my ninth of C is D. Re, Do, or D. I sang D, C, which is perfect for right now, just to kind of hear. Guess what? You can add an eleventh from that. I can add the F in there. Here 
here's a C11. Beautiful. Guess what? Here's a C13. I'm adding an A in there. Sometimes we call these by our, their first number in that order. So that D could also be called a 2. 1, 2, C, D. Here's a, you know, here's a, here's a C9 or a C2 chord. Because I have the note D in there. Beautiful. Here's how these chords work, and then we end up being able to sh sharp or flatten these notes as well. Just as we did with our third making it major or minor, our seventh making it a major seven, a flat seven, we have a natural nine, we have a flat nine, we have a sh eleven and a sharp eleven, and we also have a 13 and a flat 13, or a sharp 13 in several other cases. Depending on how you're thinking about it. Here's our extended chord. So if you're trying to figure out how to play a C11 or a C13, you can count up, or it's very easy to think in the key of A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, and it keeps continuing from there. Excellent.